What's up you guys, my name is RBG and welcome to another Transformers The Last Night update video. Kept you waiting long enough, right? I gotta apologize for that, but you guys know how I am when it comes to these type of videos. I tried to make sure I conjure up as much info as possible and squeeze it into these lengthy videos for you guys. Now I know we got an onslaught of news over the past week regarding the leaked toy images, trailers, and TV spots, but I didn't think it was enough to make a video on it. But the second official trailer we got was enough for me to get up off my ass and make a new video. I wasn't sure what I wanted to make this video about since there's so much to talk about, but I came up with the decision of doing a roster update since we got a slew of characters in the form of toys and unscreened appearances in the various trailers. Most of these I mentioned in my previous robot cast videos, but some didn't have any visuals or scans to give us a general idea of what they would look like, but I think it's safe to say that we have more than enough to get us hyped for the TF5 roster. With that said, let's go ahead and get the obvious characters out of the way. Since you guys have been bugging me to state the obvious in all my recent videos, I feel it's time for me to mention the Dinobots and Mini Dinobots. I mentioned them in my first Robot Cast video pertaining to TF5, but some of you guys probably haven't seen that particular video, so I'll mention them again now that we have actual visuals to go along with the info we received last year. We had gotten word that the Dinobot leader Grimlock would be back in the last night with a more significant role this time around. For those who remember the events of the previous film, the Dinobots just so happened to be the biggest draw of Age of Extinction. But judging from what we saw, there was nothing really major added to the characters but a overhyped brief cameo. I mean, yeah, they were featured in some good action sequences, but that's pretty much it. They didn't have that much personality that fans were familiar with. I guess you can say that Grimlock exuded some of his stubborn traits since he pretty much challenged Optimus in a test of strength to prove himself worthy of leading the Dinobots, but who knows? What we do know is that Michael Bay and the executive producer of The Last Night have acknowledged the fans' complaints about Grimlock and decided to give the character more personality. In an interview we got back in December via SlashFilm.com, they mentioned this about Grimlock. He has a personality this time for sure. A little more personality, that's for sure. He's funny. He's like a naughty dog in this movie. He's really sheepish when he does something wrong. He's a great character. He really is. We're bringing out a side of him you're going to like. You're going to relate to. That info seemed to be exactly what we got in the second trailer that was released in theaters alongside Beauty and the Beast. As you can see, he's acting just as the producer said, a naughty dog. We spot him in a funny scene with the human protagonist Kade Yeager doing something he shouldn't, which includes eating scrap vehicles. From there, Kade gives him a pep talk and tells him to go back to his hole and think about what he's done. So it looks like Grimlock will be utilized more as a comical aspect of the film which will mirror somewhat of his old Generation 1 persona. Immensely powerful, but thick up top. I think this is the Grimlock fans have been asking to see since the second live action film. I'm guessing that he'll be a character who has to adapt to living on Earth since he and his fellow Dinobots were stowed away on lockdown shit for so long, and they seem to have a barbaric nature about them. So I guess it makes sense for him to have this new puppy-like personality. I just hope they give him some form of dialogue to further flesh out his character. Moving on, I would like you to take a look at the newly introduced Mini Dinobots. We got an announcement back in June of 2016 that the Mini Dinobots would be making their on screen debut in TF5. Fans, including myself, didn't really know what to make of this news. Would they be like the dinosaur versions of the Minicons, or would they be smaller versions of the original full size Dinobots? Later in December, Michael Bay confirmed that there would indeed be tiny T-Rex Transformers appearing in the movie, and that they're just learning to spit fire, with Grimlock taking on a mentor role. So I assumed that we would be seeing more cute versions of Grimlock in miniature form. I wasn't too sure what they would look like and what their purpose would be like in the last night, but during the Super Bowl, we got a glimpse of what these little guys will look like and what their personality traits consist of. In an exclusive Super Bowl eye catcher called the Mini Dottobot Pre Bowl, we got to see three minibots whose skills and personalities were described by the TV host and celebrity apprentice winner, Matt Eisman. Now, in all honesty, I didn't know if I should take this particular TV spot seriously due to the simple fact that the Mini Dinobot's cartoony aesthetic didn't fit with Michael Bay's highly detailed Transformer design, not to mention the Autobot dog tag on Mini Slug makes him look like a cheap plushy toy. But to my surprise, the CG models in that particular video were in fact the same ones we would see in the second official trailer. You can spot Mini Strafe, Mini Slug, and Mini Grimlock all cuddled up next to Isabella Moner's character Izzy, which looks to be the same place we see the original full-size Grimlock later in the trailer, which is a junkyard. Officials confirmed that the Autobots would now be settled in the Badlands of South Dakota, which will serve as a rogue Transformers hiding ground from the human military faction known as the Transformers Reaction Force, or TRF, who will be hunting down the remaining Autobots. 
I'm not sure what purpose the mini Dinobots will serve other than comedic elements, but I really hope Michael Bay and the new room of writers at least explain how these little guys came to be and what exactly happened to the other pre-existing Dinobot knights. I have a nagging suspicion that they cut back on the other bigger Dinobots to preserve some of the budget money because this film seems to be packing a lot of CG and having all those Dinobots in would probably warrant more than a $260 million budget. Next up we have the mysterious three-headed dragon transformer who was confirmed as the legendary Autobot Knight, Dragonstorm. That's right, I said Autobot Knight. Now a lot of viewers jumped down my throat because I didn't automatically assume that this Dragon Knight was the Predacon leader Preda King. As I've told you guys time and time again, I don't believe in spreading false information in this community and I'm not going to talk about something unless I have intel at my fingertips. Some of you even called me an idiot for not assuming that it was Megatron's alt mode, which wouldn't make any sense because Megatron landed on Earth around the early 1800s and went into stasis lock after he got frozen in the Arctic Circle. I mean I love you guys, but some of you can go a little overboard with your assumptions. But I guess you had every right to believe those assumptions because almost every iteration of a three-headed dragon we've seen in other TF mythos either pertain to the Predator King or Megatron in some capacity, but this particular version is none of the above. He's not even evil as a lot of fans, even myself, perceived him to be based off the various promotions we got for TF5. If my recollection served me correctly, he was featured alongside Optimus in the first poster we saw last August on the billboard in Times Square. This was right around the time fans didn't know what direction the film would go in, but if you were to judge the poster just based off its visuals, one would automatically assume that the menacing three-headed dragon would be the main villain. But based on some of the leaked images we got regarding the toys, it turned out to be the exact opposite. Thanks to the awesome Twitter page TFW2005, we found out that the character's official name is Dragon Storm. This info came in the form of a new toy called the Mega One Step Turbo Changer. On the back of the package, it reads this. As colossal powers threaten the universe, an even greater force protecting freedom soars through the sky. The mighty dragon storm. When I read his backstory, two particular words immediately stuck out, and that was protecting freedom. When you hear those words, they don't really scream Decepticon or Predator King. Another hint that ensured us that this was a good guy was the Autobot insignia found on his chest in his robot mode. So yeah, this came as a bit of a surprise. Especially looking at the character's color scheme, I mean, we've seen Autobots sport dark colors in previous films such as Ironhide and apparently the recently released Hot Rod along with Drift will be sporting red and black color schemes, but Dragonstorm's colors and overall build makes him look like a Decepticon. But from what I've read on his Turbo Chains figure, it's not so much of a red color on his armor as it's really energy seeping from the crevices of his body. Apparently, when he breeds fire, cyberglyphic symbols will appear on his armor, so I know that's gonna look sick as hell on the screen. What his purpose will be in this film is anyone's guess. I have a suspicion that the Transformers that's said to give Merlin an artifact that wields the power of magic may in fact be Dragon Storm, but that's just my speculation. Since we're on the topic of dragons, the next Autobot we have is Steelbane, who's rumored to be the first knight. Not sure how true that is, but what we do know for sure is that his beast mode will be a wyvern. These were hybrid creatures with a dragon's head and wings and a reptilian body with two legs. It's also worth mentioning that the wyvern was the symbol of the medieval kingdom of Wessex. So it's cool that the writers are alluding the fact that the beast transformer was possibly the inspiration behind the mythological creature and its ties to the United Kingdom. The only intel we have on Steelbane right now is that he's an Autobot, but there seems to be a bit of confusion on if we actually saw him in the second theatrical trailer or not. Many of the fans and a couple insiders assumed that we caught a quick glimpse of Steelbane punching Optimus in what seemed to be the same scene we saw him fighting with Bumblebee. It's a pretty good assumption, but upon further toy leaks, I've come to the conclusion that none of the multiple Cybertronian Knights scenes surrounding Optimus are Steelbane. I think it's Skullatron or Skullatron Knights. The reason I think this is because the color of the night scene in the trailer don't match the color scene on Steel Bane's figure. Of course, one could argue that the action figures do the actual on-screen characters no justice, but if you look at the Skulltron figure, it looks a lot like the multiple knights we see in the trailer. As to who's controlling them is anyone's guess. Some fans assume that they were the new combiners that were leaked which will be the next character or characters I'm going to briefly talk about. On March 15, TFW 2005 user Unicron the Chaos Bringer shared some spoilerish info regarding a Legion class combiner known as Infernicus. It looks like it's a retool of the previous release Legion combiner Abominus set from Transformers Prime Beast Hunters. They're known as the Inferno Cons. The team consists of five characters named Rapture, Sculpt, Thrash, Glug, and Gorge. They all combine to form the menacing Infernicus. 
Now what I find funny about this particular figure is the fact that not only is it a reused mode of a pre-existing figure, but the pre-existing figure itself is nothing more than a recolor of the original Japanese Takara figure, Gorei Dora. It took me a while to recognize it, but this particular combiner actually made his on-screen debut in the series Transformers Go Samurai. For those who are unfamiliar with Transformers Go, it was an anime series and toy line exclusive to Japan. It's supposed to be a follow-up to the Transformers Prime Beast Hunter series, but since the show was already in development way before TR Prime ended, there are a lot of continuity errors and I don't recommend it to any fans. But anyways, you can spot this Decepticon combiner in Transformers Ghost Samurai episode entitled Triple Combination Swordbot. A pretty cool combiner, but nothing to write home about. But nonetheless, as you can see, these were the original colors of the retooled Abominus figure, and I can honestly say I prefer the original colors of Gore Dora over the Abominus one. Not much is known about the character Infernicus or the exact role he will take in Transformers The Last Knight, but based on the partial info we have on the toy box, I'm assuming that he will play as some sort of guardian to Quintessa as she is everything but confirmed to be involved with the creators of the Transformers. As you can see, the character Quintessa is featured on the box art as well as I'm guessing she'll be included in the package. This brings me to the next character on our roster, Quintessa herself. In one of my earlier videos regarding the extended Super Bowl TV spot I did an analysis video speculating on who the mysterious maker could be. The commercial featured an ominous female voice who seemed to have control over Optimus Prime. My theory was that she could possibly be Soulless Prime since there were plenty of clues that backed it up. We saw Bumblebee wielding what looked to be the Forge of Soulless Prime and since she goes by the alias The Maker, I speculated that it might be her. Of course, there were insiders saying that The Maker was in fact Quintessa. A bunch of sites including IMDB stated that the mysterious female voice featured in the TV spot was credited as Gemma Chan and she would be playing the role of Quintessa. Now when it comes to websites like IMDB, their news is correct about 85% of the time with most credits being rumored and limited placeholders, so I didn't want to take them up on their word just yet, especially considering the fact that Quintessa was never an actual character in the original TF mythology, it was actually the home planet of the Transformer creators better known as the Quintessons. But it looks like the writers wanted to do something new and actually make Quintessa a character that will play a pivotal role and will most likely be the leading cause to Optimus' heel turn. You can hear her asking Optimus if he seeks redemption for the sake of his dying planet, and Optimus' eyes and demeanor change shortly afterwards, as if she gains some sort of control over him. Coming in next on our list is the Headmaster Cogman. Back in June of last year, we had gotten word that TF5 would feature a Transformer with an English accent named Cogman, whose alt mode would be an Aston Martin, and in various articles including Wikipedia, we got further info detailing that he would be a polite sociopathic headmaster. And I have to admit, I was surprised at the fact that Michael Bay and the new group of writers would be using a headmaster at all. I mean, we had gotten word that they would be utilizing everything from the T of Mythos comics, toys, etc., but headmaster was something that I didn't expect to see. Essentially, Headmasters was the Japanese canon continuation of the original 84 G1 series. I believe it was actually the first Japanese exclusive Transformers franchise and the second project animated by Toei Animation since the first film. But anyways, the Headmasters were Autobots who migrated to the planet Master and would adapt their own way of transforming. There were these little human-sized robots that could transform themselves into a head and latch it onto a lifeless robot body known as a Transector, hence the name Headmaster. It's a pretty off the wall concept, but once you get into the series, it grows on you. If you pay close attention, you can spot Cogman in the latest theatrical trailer. We see him for a brief moment looking shocked as Cade Yeager is knocked out of a building by some inanimate object or projectile of some sort. I'm thinking that he'll be more like Michael Bay's version of C-3PO except a lot crazier. I mean, just look at this motion capture poster we got. He looks like a robot who's seen better days. I'm not quite sure if he'll be a faithful callback to the original Headmaster style of transforming. It's easier said than done to animate a human-sized robot transforming himself into an actual head, but that was one of Michael Bay's biggest complaints about the original G1 series. The robots didn't fully transform as much as they would simply morph or disappear into a vehicle. Speaking of vehicles, I would like you to take a closer look at the set photos of Cogman's alt vehicle mode, because this is something that instantly made me raise my eyebrow. If you look at the license plate, it reads as such, KSI6WVD. Now that may not stand out to you guys, but it does raise a suspicion I have, and that is the first three letters on the plate being KSI. For those who remember KSI or the Kinetic Solution Incorporated, they were the main enemies that harvested dead Transformers to create their own. 
I could be just reaching, but I'm thinking that Cogman may be a byproduct of one of KSI's inventions gone wrong. I don't know if this makes him an Autobot or a Decepticon, but this could explain why he's a sociopath. Maybe he's a bad test subject. Who knows? I just hope I can tolerate this character because I have a suspicion that he's going to be there for mostly comedic purposes. Next in line we have the Decepticon scrap drone turned Autobot, Willy. I had already reported that he'd be in the film in my first roster video I did last year, but we didn't have any visuals or leaked action figures for him, but I wasn't really looking for the character since I've hated him in most of the other films. I almost hate him as much as this guy. Seriously, screw this guy. If you pay close attention to the second official trailer, you can spot him standing on top of an old car next to Squeaks. Now even though I don't like Willy, I prefer him over his miniature buddy Brains. Moving on, I'd like to talk about Hot Rod. I've had a couple of choice words to say about Hot Rod, mostly good with a couple of gripes. I actually like the fact that he has two different vehicles, one being the 2017 Lamborghini and the old classic Citroen DS that'll most likely be his evasion mode. But the main issues I have with him were the overall look and the writer's decision to make him French and his backstory being that he's Bumblebee's quote unquote brother in arms. I was mad salty about these decisions but I have since come to accept it. For a while he had been kept in the dark in terms of being in motion on a trailer but since we've recently received these motion posters for some of the characters including him, I can honestly say I'm satisfied with it. I mean yeah I'd rather have him with his signature hot rod flames and whatnot, but I'm digging how he moves in motion. He's kind of like a sleeker, taller version of Bumblebee, and I know a lot of viewers mentioned that his style resembles that of Jazz with him performing some form of capoeira, but I don't necessarily agree. If you go back and watch TF4 Age of Extinction, you can see Bumblebee performing a similar move on Lockdown during his fight with Optimus. So I think this just ensures that since Hot Rod is supposed to be B's brother in arms, he'll probably share similar combat moves just with a slightly different style. As to what his purpose is in the film is still a mystery. Since his reveal, many fans have assumed history will repeat itself and Hot Rod will take the Matrix of Leadership and become the new Prime similar to the original animated film, but we'll just have to wait and see. Next up is Barricade. I think everyone can agree with me when I say that Barricade is to Bumblebee what Megatron is to Optimus Prime. He's one of the original first wave Transformers that just keeps coming back for some reason. I guess you can say that they brought him back to rival Bumblebee in a rematch since he got his ass handed to him in the first film. So far we haven't seen him in action in his robot mode. Only in a couple of scenes in his vehicle mode which is a 2016 Mustang police car. But we did get a chance to see him in motion and I have to say he looks more badass than he's ever looked in this promotional poster. He has the proportion design that I love and he doesn't look all insectoid like he did in the first film. That was the biggest issue I had with him in the first film. When he and B had their little tussle I could not tell what was going on due to all the weird pointy parts. Hopefully we'll get to see that rematch between those two now that they have their new looks and they're more pleasing to the eyes. As you can see he's still ready to punish and enslave. The next set of robots I want to talk about are the new Decepticons. Those being Onslaught, Hooligan, Mohawk, and Nitro. I would talk about Megatron but I think I've said all I can say about him. He looks the sickest hands down. But anyways, the newly introduced Decepticons that we've gotten have been some of the main topics of conversation because there were no additional photos of them other than their vehicle alt modes. If I'm not mistaken, we only got info regarding Megatron and Barricade, but thanks to the second official trailer and a couple of toy leaks, we finally have a good idea of what they'll look like. It was pretty easy to distinguish each of them individually due to the process of elimination and what little info we do have. In this scene, we see Megatron and his new Decepticon henchmen running wild on the streets of South Dakota. Starting from the right, it looks like we have Onslaught. You can tell it's him by the green color scheme and the multiple wheels going along his body. I mean his alt mode is supposed to be a western star tow truck. Now I find something very interesting about this transformer. He resembles nothing of his G1 version but yet he's a remold recolor of a character model used in Transformers 2 Revenge of the Fallen. And that particular transformer I'm talking about is the Decepticon Long Haul. He wasn't really that proactive in TF2. I mean he was one of the Decepticons that aided in freeing Megatron from the Lorithian Abyss and we see him a couple times in the Operation Firestorm battle in Egypt, but that's pretty much it. What I find funny is that Long Haul's vehicle mode highly resembled Onslaught's G1 alt mode, which was supposed to be a flatbed missile truck. So yeah, I was wondering why Bay and the producers went with the heavy duty Western Star tow truck, but now I see why. And that's to avoid reusing the same exact character model. They did it in previous films with characters like Blackout, who had a MH-53 heavy lift helicopter alt mode, 
That same character model was used for Grindor in Revenge of the Fallen with a different coat of paint, and the helicopter alt mode was a CH-53E Super Stallion. So as you can see, we're gonna be getting a lot of remodes and reused character models. Speaking of remodes, I'd like to move on to the next new addition of the Decepticon faction, Nitro. He can be seen on Megatron's right. If I didn't know any better, I'd say he looks like a remode of Shockwave with a different vehicle chassis slash armor. Now I don't have a problem with remodes and reusing of character models, but I think this is the third time we've seen a Shockwave type transformer. If you remember back in Age of Extinction, we got a custom KSI two-headed drone who looked a lot like Shockwave. I believe there were actually two of them if I'm not mistaken. Many fans assume that KSI probably got a hold of Shockwave's remains after the Chicago incident and used his design as their inspiration, but I think it was just an easy way to reuse a model and save money. I've noticed that concept art designs that didn't make the cut in previous films are later utilized in the newer installments and slightly modified. There's still no official detail on what Nitro's out mode will be, but if I find something I'll let you guys know. Last but not least, we have Mohawk and Hooligan. Right off the bat, you can tell that the smaller Decepticon hanging off the telephone line has to be Mohawk, simply because he has a Mohawk, and Michael Bay has a fetish for Transformers with hair for some strange reason. But anyways, his size tells all because his alt mode will be a Confederate motorcycle. They look pretty sturdy and full of power, so I think Mohawk will pack a big punch for his small size. The last Transformer is Hooligan who is obviously the Decepticon having the time of his life on the top of the building to your far left. His vehicle mode would be a Volkswagen Type 2 transporter or microbus camper. I don't know what Hooligan and Mohawk will be up to besides causing chaos, but I hope they present something unique to their designs. I have a feeling the two are gonna be like partners in crime. Like it'd be cool if this film does a callback to the old animated film and have Hooligan ride Mohawk while he's in his motorcycle form, similar to how the Junkions did, but that's just me. Anyways, that's all the news I have for you guys today regarding the current robot cast in Transformers The Last Night. Sorry if I kept you guys waiting so long for the video, but more and more info just kept pouring out and I like to go out with a bang when it comes to informing you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Do you think the roster of robots looks promising? Do you think Bay needs to stop reusing models and remodes and build Transformers from the ground up? Let me know. I'd also appreciate it if you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on future content. As always, I just want to say thanks for all the support you guys have given me on my videos. I'm working as hard as possible to give you guys the best engaging content that brings the community together and ramp up the hype for all things Transformers. With that said, I'm proud to announce that I'm selling custom RBG Tell All Gamers or One t-shirts on teesprings.com. It's been a week since the shirt went up and I had been meaning to tell you guys sooner but I was so busy trying to produce news on TF5. But anyways, if you guys want to show your support, I highly appreciate it, but if you can't, that's totally understandable. This is just my way of giving the faithful supporters slash notification squad a way to support me if they want to and rock something cool while doing it. At the end of the day, we're a unit and it'll assist me in buying better equipment and give me the opportunity of giving out donations to the needy. And if the support is above average, I'll start doing monthly giveaways on cool TF related toys, games, and DVDs. If you do happen to purchase a t-shirt, I'd like it if you post a picture of it and tweet it to me so you can be featured on my next video. But as I said, if you don't want to purchase the shirt or you just can't financially, it's totally fine. I still consider you my family and I appreciate your support. Today's shout out goes out to YouTube user BZ Central. The guy does excellent videos of himself impersonating Optimus Prime, so check him out. The link to his channel and playlist will be in the description. But that's pretty much it you guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you subscribe if you're new to this channel. This was your boy RBG signing out on another video. I will catch you guys later. Peace out.